One of the most iconic lightsaber duels is finally here in the form of this brand new display Lego set, the Emperor's Throne Room. A wonderfully good looking set with a hefty price tag. Is it worth that? Let's find out together in today's review. As always, this video contains both objective and subjective information about the set, along with my own personal opinion at the very end of the video. Let's get into it. <laughs> What a cool box design. It uses the 18 plus style given this is aimed at mostly adults. I think this is a perfect angle of the set. It comes out fantastically. On the side, the Diorama Collection title and on the top we get a glimpse of the brand new Luke minifigure. Finally, of course, a different angle of the set on the back. Now let's see what's inside. We get seven plastic bags divided into five numbers, the instruction manual, and two flexible rod pieces. Like many other 18 plus sets, the first few pages of the booklet tell you something about the set and scene. So pause if you'd like to have a quick read. No stickers present anywhere, so let's see what this is all about. First, the usual facts about the set at hand. Set 75352, The Emperor's Throne Room, came out May 1st this year as part of the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. It's part of LEGO Star Wars' Diorama Collection aimed at ages 18 and up. It has 807 pieces and retails for 100 US dollars, 100 euros, 90 British pounds and 160 Australian. You heard that correctly. In dollars, that's about 12 cents per brick, which definitely is on the pricey side. It weighs about 900. 130 grams, which means you're paying 10 cents per gram of Lego. Interesting, we'll get into that later. It comes with three minifigures, two of which are new and thus far exclusive to this set. The spare parts I got are shown on screen and the manual has 158 pages. And well, that seems to be all you need to know for now. The set is based on the final duel on the Death Star at the end of Return of the Jedi from 1983. Six movies lead us to this deciding moment where Luke and Darth Vader face off for the last time. Emperor Palpatine observes and ultimately steps in himself. Let's go in together and see how they recreated this scene in so much detail. But first, the minifigures. Let's begin with the elephant in the room, Luke's brand new hairpiece. A controversial change, but whether you like it or not, it's objectively more accurate than previous versions. It perfectly resembles Luke's real hairstyle, and I personally think it looks really good. It has a bit of a more matte finish than other hairpieces too. The rest of the figure isn't anything too special, but does exactly what it needs to do. He accurately has one black glove, since of course, he lost his hand by a particular someone. <laughs> The torso printing is looking good, same goes for the back, and overall, it's quite a simple figure. He does have a secondary face that's a little bit sadder, nice to have as always. I'm a big fan of this new version, onto the second one. This is actually my first Palpatine figure I own, so I'm quite excited for it. He's got a cloth cape along with the latest style hood piece, which I'm still not sure if I like it all that much. I really liked that older hood design, but nonetheless, it's a fine look overall. He has the tan skin color kind of, which to be fair, depending on the scene you base it on, is accurate. His eyes are kind of yellow white-ish without pupils, which is an interesting choice. I do like it better than him having actual pupils like before, but still, I'm not sure. Like Luke, he has a secondary face that's really, really quite angry and aggressive. Very good if you want to use the force lightning for him. Speaking of which, he comes with two lightning pieces and I always find these super nostalgic for some reason. The rest of the printing looks as expected, there's not much to it because it's really just all black robes. Finally, Darth Vader. This figure isn't new. We've had him in the TIE Bomber earlier this year, but I do believe this to be one of the good, if not the best, Vader so far. He resembles him perfectly. Unlike Luke and Palpatine, this figure does have arm printing, which looks great. And the torso print flows over nicely onto the legs. Vader also uses that same cape, and under the helmet we see Anakin's burnt face, and some subtle details on the backside. Compared to the movie, I'd say this is very accurate. In general, the details are all there, so there isn't much to complain about. 
I've seen some comments online complaining about how we didn't get the Emperor's Royal Guards, but I'm gonna defend LEGO hard on this. They simply weren't part of the scene. They're not present, so it's the right call. God, leave us. Would it be cool to have them nonetheless? Sure. The extra two figures might have done something good for the price as well, but this absolutely cannot be considered a lack of any kind. Building this was really quite the experience. You probably already expected that back section was super unique and fresh. A technique I have never seen before. Putting those stairs on was quite satisfying as well, along with the art structure above. There is honestly a little bit of everything here, so as far as the building experience goes, I'd give this a 10 out of 10. Super fun. I spent about two hours in total putting this together. This model measures 21.3 centimeters wide, 17 and a half centimeters deep, and about 18 centimeters high. And the base plate is about the same size as the other two medium-sized diorama sets. Now, where the heck do I even begin? At first glance, it's really, really quite something special. Something I noticed right away was the very limited amount of exposed studs. I counted 50 in the visible areas. That's crazy. It is also smooth and stylized, almost too clean for a Lego set. Now let's begin with the arch section and the window. The way this is built is very ingenious using those flexible rod pieces and clips. They look fantastic with this angle and it gives it some lovely, lovely depth. Comparing it to the source material, the placement is really spot on as well and the printed window behind it is just that finishing touch. It looks just amazing. In general, ladies and gentlemen, look at the resemblance of all these elements. It's just wild to me. The stairs are quite possibly 100,000% Perfect, look at this. It's identical, I'm blown away. The shaping of the floor matches as well with it kind of going in the shape of the window behind. If I want to nitpick these, not sure what they are, but they do seem a little bit on the smaller side. They technically should be a tad larger compared to the figures, but they do look very good in my opinion, so I can easily look past that. Even the way they sit in the floor is accurate, like <laughs> how? Palpatine's chair is also very accurate. I wasn't sure what to think of it at first, but then I put on that last piece on top and well, it is actually quite nice. It's a bit rough around the edges, but it's absolutely a decent resemblance. Even the railing is accurate, maybe a bit bulky at the connection points, but nothing too outstanding, I suppose. You can look under the platform from the side, which shows the black supports. Even that looks cool and gives you the idea that this isn't ground level, but in fact a bit higher up. Similarly to the previous diorama sets, the whole thing sits on this black outlined plinth with the metallic grill pieces on the side. This look really did grow on me, I really like it actually. And this also has the logo with the quote once again. I am a Jedi like my father before me. Optional is to put on the 40th anniversary printed piece on the front here, but just like the executor, I don't know yet if I prefer it with or without. It's a cool thing to have though, either way. Now the back of this model isn't the prettiest, but that's to be expected. Besides, I feel like not many people are gonna display this the wrong way around, so <laughs> I think we're good. Something I personally don't like though is how these two pins hold the window in place. It's a nice feature to have, but you can see them stick out in the front. And if you remove this, it can still stay perfectly in place and since it's kind of a stationary display set anyway, you won't shake it around. This is hardly criticism, because you can simply remove them, but still worth mentioning. As for the features, the chair spins. What a surprise. On the floor, there's a few studs to put your figures on so they don't fall off easily every two seconds. And underneath this platform right here, there's a place to store Palpatine's Force Lightning if you don't have those displayed. Or lightsabers, it depends, really. So far, I'm a big fan of it. I love the aim at an older audience, and these recent sets do a pretty good job at that. As you can probably tell, this seems like a solid set, but is it actually worth picking up? Pros and guns. First off, the overall look and style is just very, very good. Its symmetry is incredibly satisfying and it looks fantastic on a shelf. If you're looking for a unique building experience, this definitely is the set for you. I explained it before, it is quite something. There are no stickers, they're all printed pieces. We have two brand new minifigures and just the iconicness of the whole concept is nice. Now, as far as the cons, leaving the most obvious for last, I know there are many people who collect minifigures above all else, and I must say to those people, this set 
is really boring if you take away the minifigures. Without them, it's just a plain empty room all of a sudden, and it really looks like something important is missing. That is something to keep in mind. Obviously, these are kind of made to have the figures on display, but still. And secondly, the price. The 12 cents per brick must be taken with a grain of salt, but even if we look past that, Jang, I guess, says it best, $100 is too much for the amount of stuff I see in front of me. It's a relatively small build for $100, and man, I don't know about that. Especially if we look at other sets in the same price range, it just doesn't really add up. Sure, this is a premium style design, it's aimed for adults, but does that justify it? I love it. I think this set is objectively good, it's nostalgic, it does exactly what it needs to. What you get is fantastic, but whether or not it's worth the price tag, that's something you're gonna have to decide for yourself. If you liked this video, make very sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell not to miss a single future upload, and then I hope I'll see you in the next LEGO review.